Hallelujah. We welcome you to this morning English worship. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endureth forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall you raise up to your feet and put your hands together and praise him. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord forever. Give thanks to the Lord. The God King is love and just forever.
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, it's you I live for every day, Lord Jesus. Give us grace and mercy to live for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and praise him. It's you I live for every day. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. That you have set us for us, oh man. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all in one accord. Let's all say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. I'm trading. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of
Elisha of blood. You are the one worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Now is the time to bring our tithes and offering to His presence, amen. Let's all sing a song and praise Him. He's a rock, amen. There is no rock, there is no God like our God. Praise the Lord, my friends. I'm so happy to connect with you this morning. Truly, a God is a good God. We read in Psalm 27, verse number 13. It says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Our God's goodness can be experienced even in the place where we live. Amen. How many of you could experience the goodness of God? If you are experiencing the goodness of God, can you type Amen in the chat box? Hallelujah! So that I will know that you are watching and agreeing with the you know, message that I am speaking to you this morning. Hallelujah! Truly, as we are going to meditate God's word this morning, I believe that God is going to speak to you. For some of you, this can be a prophetic message that enriches your faith and you will have a closer walk with God. You will put your confidence in God totally, surrendering your life. Hallelujah! The goodness of God is the foundation of our faith. When you learn about the Lord, when you come to know more about God, it teaches us, there is only good in our Lord God Almighty. There is nothing evil in Him. And He wants to do good to us all the time. Somebody say all the time. Hallelujah. All the time God wants to do good to you and me, my friend. Hallelujah. So the more we know goodness of God, the more we trust Him. That is the principle. The more we know the goodness of God, the more we are going to put our trust in Him. The more we put our trust in Him, it is easier for us to put our lives in the hands of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah! The more we put our trust in Him, it is easier for us to hand you know it is it is it is easier for us to surrender our, our lives into the hands of god amen only by placing our lives in his hand we can open the way for him to save us bless us 
and work through us so that his wonderful plans, purpose, his will can be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Amen. So my dear friend, our God is a good God. He wants to do good to you and me. At no time, I'll do it again. Until you settle the fact that God is good and you can trust Him with your life, your faith is never going to be a great because you'll always draw back in fear. In other words, if you don't begin to understand and put your trust in God, knowing that He is a good God, you will always be caught up with fears of life. And you will always be disturbed and worried about your future. My dear friend, I want to tell you, God is not confused. He is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. He is not a God that he does one day, you know, he would uh, do good to you. Another day he does bad things to you. No, no way. He always do good to you and me. My friend, God will not give you any sickness. Amen. God is not the God who gives you poverty in your life. Amen. Poverty is not from God. Sickness is not from God. So don't let sickness and poverty overtake you, my friend. It is not the plan and purpose of God, you know, in your life to be sick, to be poor, you know, to be nothing. He wants to be in abundant, complete, perfect. You know, he wants you to be in wellness. In good health, having everything in plenty and, uh, you know, follow and worship him with all happiness in your life. That is what our God wants to do to you and me. I want you to turn your attentions to the familiar passage, Psalm 23. Let's all turn our Bibles to Psalm 23. I know from our childhood, many of us would have memorized this portion of the Bible, you know, in all our homes, uh, we see a lot of pictures or, uh, you know, scripture boards, you know, uh, describing that the Lord is our shepherd. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning that you have given us. Even as we are going to meditate your word, Speak to us, O oh God. We open our hearts. We open our mind. Give us the manna for this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As we read this psalm, we understand this is a psalm of David. We do not know the exact time in which David wrote this psalm. But him being a shepherd, you know, you understand how the Lord 
was to him and he writes this uh, psalm in a very personal way very personal way if you read this psalm you will understand how david was closely connected with god dependent on god and he had a hope in god for us to understand the lord is our shepherd we need to understand the characteristics of a sheep number 1 sheep is a dumb animal a stupid animal sheep is singularly unintelligent they don't learn from their mistakes in fact often they repeat their mistakes they tend to wander they go astray and they are unable to find their way home to the sheep's fold even though it is within their sight that's why it says the sheep are stupid dumbest animal the sheep always depended on the guidance of its master all the time the sheep needs the guidance of the master my dear friends in our christian life you and me are like this sheep we are stupid in our own way in terms of not following the ways of god we go astray we sin against god and again and again we fall into the same sin if the lord is not our shepherd we would have been destroyed because the lord is our shepherd even though we are stupid the lord helps us to come out of our stupidity helps us to come back to our senses even though we are very closer to the place where we are supposed to reach yet we are wandering we need the guidance of the lord god almighty that is why scripture says in psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd i do not know how many of you could say this morning can you say it with me the lord is my shepherd if you agree with me can you please type on your chat box say the lord is my shepherd hallelujah praise the lord we see the lord is our shepherd he helps us to come out of our mistakes sinful life he helps us to be in the right place where he wants us to amen the sheep as i said they are dumbest and uh, stupid animals many of us today we act in our stupidity forgetting where we are what we are supposed to do where we are supposed to go how to come back we do not know but when the lord is our shepherd the psalmist say the lord is my shepherd he say it very much in present tense is the lord is your 
shepherd this morning if not say to the lord lord you be my shepherd you be my guide you be a person who would uh, you know guide me in the right way you know my friends it's interesting you know when we read uh, in the bible jehova rohi the lord my shepherd it is also can be translated as jehova my friend he is a friend to each and every one of us this morning as a friend who would walk with us no matter where we go he is always with us that is why the bible says the lord is my shepherd he wants to shepherd you and me number 2 the sheep are defenseless the the porcupines will have quills or thorns the cats and their family will have claws lions will have their teeth some other animals may have their horns to defend themselves against their attack but sheep and lambs are specially vulnerable and they are in need of protection all the time that is why the shepherds in and around bethlehem they still use sling made of leather to chase the wild animals that is coming to attack their sheep or lambs likewise we the people of god we need constant protection from god almighty he needs to protect us at times we may not even know who the enemy is but the lord knows amen number 3 the sheep they cannot predict they do not have any intelligence to alert themselves from the coming danger that is coming against them often you would see these lambs will climb up the hills not knowing the danger that is ahead of them so the shepherds need to tenderly search for the sheep and carry them to unto their safety by carrying them on their shoulder wrapped it around their chest and bring them to a place where they are secured many times we as god children we the people of god we do not understand what is the danger that is ahead of us we can poorly perceive the dangers that is coming ahead of us but the lord knows and he foresees and he protects us all the time hallelujah not only that the sheep needs a meticulous care of their shepherd time to time they need to be watered they need to be cleaned you know that is why they are depended on the shepherds and this sheep needs a support you know often these sheep would come and scratch the legs of their shepherds waiting for the response of their shepherds to come and tap them on their body on their shoulder 
so that they know they are in a right place they are secure all the time a sheep needs a patting on their body so that they would, would know that they are without fear my dear friends this morning no wonder the lord jesus said i am the good shepherd i am the good shepherd who cares for the benefit of my sheep i would protect them i would provide for them is the lord is your shepherd this morning if not you can ask the lord lord jesus forgive my sins come into my heart i want to accept you as my lord and my savior you be my guide you be my shepherd you be there to you know correct me when i am wrong when you are willing to submit yourself the lord will be your shepherd amen hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord let's come back to psalm 23 verse number 1 again it says the lord is my shepherd i lack nothing amen you and me as a child of god we lack nothing because the lord is our shepherd how many of you could say amen hallelujah you and me we may have lot of wishes in our life we all may have many wishes but it is not a want but the lord is able everybody say the lord is able he is more than able to meet all our wants in other words if you look at this verse this can be understand that the lord is my shepherd i lack nothing when the lord is your shepherd you and me we will not be in want that is what this scripture gives us an understanding i want to ask you a question is the lord is your shepherd when he is your shepherd you will not be in want my dear friend no matter what you know the situations around you believe with all of your heart do not fear for what is happening around you believe with all of your heart and trust him that he is going to be your provider for every single need of yours you can put your trust in him say this verse again and again and again what is your want this morning if your want this morning is health the lord will heal you the lord will cure from every ailments and he will give you good health my dear friend if you are going through financially a difficult moment say to yourself the lord is my shepherd i shall not be in want hallelujah hallelujah and you our needs will be met my dear friend be strong and courageous full of hope trusting in the lord hallelujah the lord is your shepherd and you lack nothing in your life you know there is nothing that you say that i don't have this make the lord bless you abundantly my dear friend hallelujah praise the lord not only that from this portion of the bible that we need to understand all our precious tender mercies are traced back to one source that's the good shepherd himself hallelujah because he is our shepherd our source is only one that is the lord i don't have so many 
sources to whom I can put my trust. I have only one source that is the Lord. And I want to as a sheep of his flock. I want to put my trust in him and him alone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, there was this child in a Sunday school. She was telling this psalm, verse number 1. She misquoted this verse number 1 as, The Lord is my shepherd, what more shall I want? Isn't it true this morning? The Lord is our shepherd. What more that we want this morning? May the Lord be your supplier. May he be the one and only source of your life, my dear friend. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, we do not lack temporal needs. We do not lack in our spiritual needs, nor emotional needs. Hallelujah. Whatever is your needs, whatever is your wants this morning, the Lord is able to meet your immediate temporal, spiritual and emotional needs because He is our shepherd. We do not say, I am not in want or I lack nothing because I have so much of money in the bank. We do not say, because I have ability, I lack nothing. I can always get another job. We say, because the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Hallelujah. May every one of you listen to me this morning. May you be able to say, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing in my life. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you in a supernatural manner. Hallelujah. In um, the second verse, it says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures he hits me beside quiet waters hallelujah the lord a god he makes us to lie down in green pastures and leads us beside quiet waters so in other words the lord the good shepherd, the Lord, our shepherd, he feeds us, he leads us. He feeds us and he leads us. As a sheep, sheep must have grass and water to live. It is up to the shepherds to provide those elements for them. It is not the job of the sheep to find their grass and water. They depend on their shepherd and the shepherds, it is the shepherd's responsibility to provide those elements, be it grass or water, they would provide for them. Hallelujah. I want to know this morning. The Lord will take you to the place where there is green pasture. Which shows there is enough supply. You are not in lack. There is enough supply. And also, he takes you beside, he leads you, he leads us besides quiet waters. The sheep 
will not drink a troubled water. Do you know that? They don't drink a troubled water. They always drink a still, quiet, still waters. If the water is troubled, they will, they will be afraid to go near because there must be a, a, a crocodile inside. A wild animal will come to attack them. So they are disturbed. But the moment when a shepherd leads the sheep near a quiet waters without any disturbance, the sheep will be without any fear and they would be able to drink the waters and they will be able to lie down in green pasture. If they are afraid, they always tend to you know, move here and there. The moment they know this is a place of safety and secure, only then they will lie down. You and me, we as people of God, let's say together, the Lord is my shepherd and he makes me to lie down in green pasture and he leads me to the quiet waters. Hallelujah. May the Lord give you rest. My friend, if you are a busy person, wondering, may the Lord give you rest. My friend, may the Lord take away all the fear from your life and he will lead you to a, a refreshing regenerating you know quiet waters so that you can put all your trust in him and take some rest and be comforted knowing that you are protected you know you are guarded by the good shepherd hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah that is what you know we read from this portion of the Bible and verse number 3 he refreshes my soul he guides me along the right paths for his name sake I want to tell you my dear friends are you growing sorrowful in your soul are you troubled are you hurt are you breathing are you worried all the time? The scripture says, He refreshes our soul. He wants us to give rest. In the world that is filled with sin and sorrow, you need to trust the Lord God Almighty to give you hope and salvation. Salvation is from the Lord and he is there to save your soul. He refreshes your soul means because of the sin of your life, you are troubled, you are confused, you are uh, living in guilty all the time. The moment you know that the Lord is your shepherd and you can commit your ways unto him, you say to the Lord, Lord, Forgive me. Forgive my sins. I want you to guide me and lead me. My dear friend, he will refresh your soul. He will save your soul. You will be at peace. Not just physically, but also spiritually. My friend, not only really that, he will be your guide. He guides me along the right paths. For his name's sake. Hallelujah. The scripture says very clearly. He leads. He guides us. On the paths. Of what is right. In other translation. It says he leads me in the paths. Of righteousness. 
for his name's sake. A Hebrew rabbi was explaining this portion saying, The Lord will lead me from a circuit of righteousness. From one righteousness to another righteousness, the Lord is able to lead me. You don't need to have ups and downs in your spiritual, moral walk with God. A God is a God of just. And the moment you put your trust in him, he will lead you into circuit of righteousness. From one righteousness to another righteousness. From another righteousness to another righteousness. You will always be protected because the Lord is your guide. He is your path. How you and me in our life's journey can be led from one righteousness to another righteousness. By reading and trusting God and God's word. Bible says very clearly his word is a lamp unto our feet. When we read God's word, he will help us to direct ourselves from which is right and wrong. So we can always be careful to do the thing that are right because he is going to lead me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Hallelujah. Because he is God, because he is good, because he is a righteous God, he is a God who cares for me, he is my protector, he is my provider, he is my savior. For his name's sake, he is going to lead me from one righteousness to another righteousness as a circuit. My dear friend, with our own righteousness, with our own name and fame, we cannot keep ourselves, you know, sinless. We need the grace of God in our life. We need the provision of God. We need the guidance of our God in our life. And he will lead us from one righteousness to another righteousness. He will save us from our sinful life. You know, what a honor to have, you know, our Lord, God Almighty as our shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse number four, it says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Another translation, it says, Ye though I walk through valley of the shadow of death. My dear friend, in our life journey, we may walk through a darkest valley, you know, when a shepherd is leading the sheep from one place to another place, you will be going through a shadow because of the mountains that are around, because of the darkest valley that you are going through from one mountain to another mountain, it may be fearful, it may be dangerous. But my dear friend, the psalmist say, I fear no evil because you are with me. Hallelujah. You and me should have that confidence when we going through moment of fearful, dangerous life situation. You are not alone, my friend. You and me, we don't need to be afraid of because the Lord is with us. 
He is with us this morning to strengthen us, to encourage us, to be courageous. My dear friend, fear is not from God. Fear is the tactics, scheming of the devil. He will always keep you in fear. He will always keep you in worried. The Lord will take away all your fears. Amen. The Lord will make you always courageous. The Lord will make you to live a life that is hopeful. The Lord will strengthen you, assure you all the time that he is with you. Amen. My dear friend, I do not know what situation that you are going through this morning. But the Lord wants to tell you this morning, you know, even though you walk through a darkest moment of your life, you know, it's like you are going through a valley situation. You are so much down spiritually, morally, you know, financially. May the Lord be there next to you. May you experience the presence of God in your life so that you could walk, you know, fearlessly. You can face every situation knowing the Lord is with you. You don't need to be troubled. You don't need to be worried. You don't need to be sorrowful. Be bold. Be courageous. Because the Lord is with you, my friend. Hallelujah. The scripture says, Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. When I am wrong, the Lord will use his rod to correct me. When I am in dangerous situation, he will stretch his staff and they will comfort me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At times, chastisement is needed for the child of God. We need to be warned but it is for our own good, my dear friend. You need to understand the chastisement that we receive from the Lord is for our own betterment. And uh, there will always, he would, you know, take us near with his staff and they will comfort us. They will be a great comfort because the Lord corrected me when I am going astray. And he takes, uses his staff to pull me closer to him to experience that I am safe, I am protected, I am corrected. Hallelujah. As a child of God, we need to experience this path in our life. And verse number 5, it says, You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Hallelujah. The scripture says that the Lord prepares the table before our enemies. You know, in the wilderness, the shepherd would lead all the sheep to a safest place where they would uh, go and bring the best of the pasture and uh, feed their sheep. When they feed the sheep day and night, the enemies, the wild animals would be watching from a distance you know how these sheep have been protected by their shepherd, yet been fed with the best of best feeds of the mountains. So that's why the scripture says, the Lord, our shepherd, he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. 
The enemies are around us watching that we have been set a table before. The lavish food, you know, the provision of God is set for us. But they cannot come and devour us. They cannot come near us because we are special to our Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. You and I, we are special before God. And God, you know, prepares a table, a feast for you and me. Though the enemies are around, they cannot attack us. They can only, you know, gnash their teeth of how the Lord is protecting and providing us. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is a good shepherd. Amen. And it says, You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. You need to understand the Lord anoints you with an anointing to say that you are special. You are being separated for me. And no harm will come near you. No sickness will come near you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord anoints you with this anointing to say that you are separated for a purpose. You are called for a purpose. And you will always have enough. Your cup overflows means you will have always up to the brim you will never say that i have less have less you know lacking something is lacking in my life the lord will make sure that always he keep on refilling when you are a child of god i am a child of god you have been uh, taken up for a special purpose by god to be used to. you know god would keep on filling your supplies and you will always have up to the brim. Amen. That's how God is going to protect you. In verse number 6. It's very much futuristic. It says surely. Your goodness and love. Will follow me. All the days of my life. My dear friends. That is the confidence. That's the security. Of you and me as a child of God. No matter. How long we live in this world. In our spiritual walk with God, in our day to day life, we will experience the goodness and the love. Can we all say together? Surely your goodness and love will follow all the days of our life. Hallelujah. That's our God. That's why in the beginning I said our God is a good God. May you be able to experience the goodness of God. In all your life. Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My dear friend. There is no greater place. There is no better place. Than to be in the presence of God. In other words. David the psalmist says. Where else I will be except. Then being in the presence of God, I will always, always be in the house of God, worshipping Him, praising Him, thanking Him and following Him for He is my shepherd. Is the Lord your shepherd this morning? If you do not understand these verses, may these verses will give you understanding and give you spiritual awakening this morning. I pray that may the Lord would minister to you. May you live in such a time as this with you know, confidence, with faith, totally surrendering our lives. You may be you and me, we are like stupid, dumb sheeps. You know, we are not able to judge what the enemy is planning ahead of us. End dangers that is coming ahead of us. You know we cannot protect ourselves. We cannot feed ourselves. We always need the touch, tender care of the shepherd. Let us declare with all of our confidence and faith. Say the Lord 
you are my shepherd i am not in lack i will not be in want hallelujah let's pray dear heavenly father we thank you for this morning thank you for bringing us together in this manner even as you are lord we have gone through the scripture we understand the goodness of god for you are our shepherd dear friends after this service anyone would like to meet with me for prayer for encouragement or you just want to say hello to say that you are blessed through this message you can connect with me through the zoom id that is displayed below please you can contact me for the next 2 hours i will be online i will be happy to see you through zoom i will also be able to pray for you if there is any concern that we need to take it into prayer we are there to pray for you and uh, you know help you may the lord bless you amen